On today's episode, Tesla backs away from that giant gigacasted chassis. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. In a recent Reuters exclusive entitled Tesla Retreats from Next Generation Gigacasting Manufacturing Process, the authors have reported that the much anticipated very large single piece die casting that was to form the chassis of Tesla's new small vehicle platform has been abandoned and the vehicle will be manufactured using the current technology of die cast front and rear subframes attached to a stamped aluminum unit constructed body. So what happened? Well, those of you that remember my original skepticism about gigacasting, and many viewers criticized me sharply for that skepticism, may recall my doubts about whether the physics of the process and its application make sense in monocoque vehicle production. Now, for mass production vehicles, the holy grail is high strength with low weight at low cost. Decades of mass production experience has narrowed the choice of available technologies in achieving this to just a few. Separate frames are gone from passenger cars and they are slowly disappearing in light trucks as well. With the majority of modern passenger vehicles using transverse engines and front wheel drive, the use of a front subframe to carry the powertrain and front end components is used as much for production convenience as for structural reasons. With this technique, the powertrain steering and suspension can be built up onto a subframe onto which the body and weight is dropped on the assembly line and is installed relatively easily. And this allows the assembly process to be broken down into shorter parallel lines, which increases efficiency. Now, many vehicles use a cast alloy rear suspension carrier to carry the rear suspension assembly in a similar arrangement. Now, the concept of front and rear subframes in a unit construction car isn't new. In 1959, the original Austin and Morris Mini used this concept with a very advanced rubber suspension system carried in sophisticated front and rear subframes made of welded steel stampings. The subframes were bolted to the body structure at four attach points for each subframe, and the entire structure was very rigid and light for its time. But was it as light as it could have been? The ugly reality of using subframes, whether it's steel stampings or giant die castings, is that the stresses and loads carried by the system flow through the attach points between the subframes and the body structure. The body and weight is consequently strengthened locally at the attach points, and the body must still provide torque boxes front and rear to handle torsional and longitudinal bending modes. If the subframes could be welded to the body structure, weight and cost could be saved, but if the subframes are die cast light alloy, they can't be welded to the structure, and service requirements usually dictate a bolt-in arrangement anyway. Eliminating the cost, complexity, and weight of the attach points could be achieved by gigacasting the entire chassis in one giant piece. While technically feasible, the equipment would be gigantic, expensive, and the machine cycle time would be enormous. I'd expect a machine cycle time at a minimum of two to three minutes, not including demolding and then snagging and machining of the finished casting. To maintain optimal production rates of about a car a minute on a modern line, multiple machines would be needed. And collision repair of a structure like that would be essentially impossible. But more importantly, with Ford having pioneered high volume mass production of stamped aluminum bodies using welding and adhesives, what is the point of gigantic die castings for the front and rear clip anyway? As a carrier for pre-assembled mechanical units, subframes make a lot of sense from an assembly perspective. But if the entire chassis is one die casting, corner modules and powertrains must be installed individually unless they in turn are built up on their own subframes, a little like Russian dolls. So to me, none of this makes sense. And it looks like Tesla now agrees. Now, I'm not going to say I told you so. I'm not. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.